Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black white Phyrexia and Taxes deck, which combines the taxation effects from Thalia and Anointed Peacekeeper, which are good against control, and then we've got the Phyrexians, which are quite good against creatures, especially when it comes to Phyrexian Vindicator and Phyrexian Obliterator, which can both punish the opponent for dealing damage to our creatures, so they're a nightmare to attack into and almost impossible to block. So the fact that we can now play both is thanks to the addition of some new black-white dual lands. Restless Fortress, of course, also gives us a nice way to close out games as a nice creature land. And then the only reason we can actually play these in the same deck is that we also have some lands that can name a specific creature type and then fix our colors, secluded courtyard naming Phyrexian. And then we also have the Seed Core, which specifically fixes mana for Phyrexian spells. So that's why we can actually pull off the Vindicator and Obliterator in the same deck. Then we still need lots of other black-white dual lands with Shattered Sanctum, we've got Caves of Koilos, which can be a bit painful against red aggro, and then a few Scoured Barons, which do enter tapped, but at least gain us one life. And then we've got a few non-dual lands, so one Swamp in case we need to search it up, and then the Bandit Mire and Iganjo giving us a bit more interaction, but it also means that if we have a hand with Obliterator, we're not going to want to see Iganjo, and we're not going to want to see these black lands with Vindicator in hand, so it can lead to some slightly awkward turns, but for the most part with all these black white dual lands it's not been a huge problem so we're not playing Shieldred in this deck, it's all about the memes, trying to get Vindicator and Obliterator in play, using the same four lanes as kind of the objective. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got plenty of other Phyrexians, which will benefit from the mana fixing from Courtyard and the Seed Core. At one mana, Skrelf can be very important to protect some of those powerful four mana creatures. Then at two mana, we also have Phyrexian Missionary, 2-3 lifelink, not bad against red, and then later can also kick it to maybe get back one of our four drops from the graveyard. And then we've got three copies of Grafted Butcher, which will give our Phyrexians plus one plus one, so it can pump the team, and when it enters, gives our Phyrexians menace until end of turn as well, and can even get it back from the graveyard. Then we've got some spot removal, two copies of Cut Down, two copies of Go for the Throat, and at three mana, a bit more interaction with Annex Sentry, which can exile an opposing artifact or creature with mana value three or less until Sentry leaves the battlefield, and as a Phyrexian, can also benefit from something like a Grafted Butcher. And then we also have two copies of Phyrexian Awakening, which is especially useful when facing a Wandering Emperor, since this will give all our Phyrexians Vigilance, so we no longer have to tap our Vindicator and Obliterator to attack, which means we can play Offense and Defense, also very important against Red Aggro, because sometimes getting an Obliterator or Vindicator in play against Red can be great, but you can't necessarily attack with it if it's holding back an attack from the opponent, and then it can still maybe top deck some Burn spells to close out the game, so being able to both attack and block thanks to Vigilance is huge, and then the Incubator can also turn into a nice 4-4 creature, which applies quite a bit of pressure. And then we've got more life gain with Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, which can be prototyped for 3 mana, or we can cast it for 7 later in the game. And another Phyrexian, of course, to benefit from Awakening and our mana fixing. And then our four drops, of course, a Vindicator and Obliterator, which for the most part our opponent's going to avoid damaging. So they're pseudo unblockable, Obliterator having Trample, Vindicator having Flying, but occasionally the opponent will be forced to either block them or attack into them to close out the game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and is somewhat promising. Uh, Iganjo means it's going to be a little harder to play Obliterator on curve. But we've got Vindicator and up against the red aggro. Okay. Vindicator's probably my first choice anyway against turn one Phoenix Chick. Could go for Courtyard still naming Phyrexian to play Skralv. But uh, turn two Thalia, I'm not gonna want to take damage. And this needs to name Phyrexian. Alright, so take three here most likely. Go for the throat, also an option, but I think Thalia is going to be more effective. Can protect with Skralv. And that's going to slow them down a little bit. Hopefully to the point where we can get Vindicator down at a healthy life total. That's the goal. Can still block Scoundrel, even through potential Monstrous Rage, only gets up to 2 toughness. And Phoenix Shake already has a Wicked Roll, so putting a Monster Roll would cancel out the original one. So yeah, opponent just has to pass it back. And then now keep up go for the throats and need to play caves, which does mean I'll take a bit of damage next turn. 
but seems worthwhile. And we'll keep Thali on defense. The Lightning Strike goes upstairs. And then we're going to want to go for the throat here. So we're at nine. Going to be eight thanks to caves. There's going to be kind of a race here against our burn spells. Lightning Strike puts me to 5. I think we still keep Thalia back for a turn. Cut down can deal with Scoundrel or maybe even Mishra's Foundry. So I could wait to play Obliterator for another turn, just so I don't take damage of Caves of Coilos, which I'm kind of into. And then for now, send in just a Vindicator, keep up cut down and keep back Thalia. Difference between 4 and 5 life is double play with fire burning me out. And yep, that's going to put us to three. So if they have another lightning strike, we're dead. Couldn't find any of our life linkers in time in this game. Bowden does keep on top, which is not a good sign. Godric, yeah, so if they enable celebration, we're dead. For now, we can chum block. And then I'm probably going to want to cut down the Scoundrel now. Opponent debating if they want a Monstrous Rage here, perhaps. Okay. So we can play Obliterator. And then I'm not sure if we need to keep Vindicator back to prevent Godric from flying over and killing me. But if I put our opponent to 10, then both Phyrexians would be lethal next turn. I guess Butcher pumping the team. That's three more damage. So if I attack with Skrelv, put our opponent to 14. Next turn we would have 12, 13, 14. I guess that's worth it. Don't really need Skrelv back on defense since our creatures are not going to be targeted by removal. Let's see for that. I guess Godric is potentially going to block Skrelv, although our team will also get Menace from the Butcher, so they would need a second blocker. Felden, that's fine. They could still find a Burn spell, but if they have to sack a bunch of lanes for it, that may still be okay. So yeah, if I play Butcher, Skrelv would have Menace, so they would need a Burn spell on Skrelv. Which, if they had one, I guess it would be play with fire instead of a uh, lightning strike, which otherwise would have killed me. So this would technically be lethal. Creatures have menace. And they can't animate foundry and block with it. And that does it. Wow, exact C's here. Super close game against Monored Aggro. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Butcher into Sentry, and then we've got our choice of Vindicator or Obliterator if we find a fourth land. I guess with High Gunjo, it's pointing more towards Vindicator. One of our three non-dual lands in the deck. Opponent's probably a pretty 
controlling blue-white deck here. So it doesn't bode well for our four mana creatures. And at least Butcher pumps Sentry. And it looks like a blue-white mill deck. Well, we can play Vindicator and then hope there's no sweepers incoming. And next turn can go for Obliterator. Soul Partition, all right. Make that two. So now we can play Obliterator plus Skrelv even. And they're not going to want to unearth Mindbreaker into Obliterator if they can avoid it. Or else they'll end up uh, having to sacrifice all their lands. So if they don't have a Sweeper, we might still be okay. Skrelv can also help against a potential Wandering Emperor trying to exile Obliterator. Third Mindbreaker discarded, and a creature land can help out as well. Okay, so go for Sentry. And then it's probably still going to be better to attack with Obliterator here. Hit for 8, put our opponent to 10, and then present lethal next turn. If they unearth Mindbreaker, that's fine. And hope to dodge another board wipe. Blast Zone is acceptable. Farewell is not. Alright, all our creatures are gone. Go for Vindicator. Still pretty decent against Mindbreaker being unearthed. And the opponent is going for it, so this is going to hurt them. Deal 6. And then 5 on the way back, so... Not sure if they accounted for this. Yeah, it looks like they didn't, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Skralf to protect Flash Gorger and Obliterator. And if they deal with Skralf, we have a backup. Just gotta hope it's a matchup where Flash Gorger and Obliterator are actually good. Which this doesn't seem to be. Rafine's Tower means Esper. Either Control or maybe a Domain deck. And those tend to have sweepers that can ignore cards like Skrelv. And yep, yeah, Garden points towards Domain. Opponent can already cast a 1 mana Leyline Binding here. So I guess we have Skrelv to protect the Flesh Gorger. And then plenty of 4 drops coming up if we find a land for it. So your opponent's gonna consider Leyline Binding on Skrelv, does not go for it. Another Flesh Gorger for now. And cycles a Rafine's Tower. Four mana, still nothing. Alright, get to play our four drop now. Although opponent could also play a Sunfall next turn to wipe the board, which is going to be pretty rough. Given our hand, I think we still have to commit. Opponent with a Faithful Mending, actually. Alright, not sure what's going on. Might be a Reanimator deck, after all. Double Lockdown, not all that effective against Flash Gorger. And a Syncope to counter, alright, so more counter spells than I expected. Let's see if they still have a Sweeper, although given that they countered Obliterator doesn't seem very likely. 
And yeah, we'll hit for six and basically run it back. Although now they might have a six mana sweeper. Flashback mending, gain two. So we don't quite have lethal next turn with double flash gorger. Discarding a negate. Not very good in this matchup. Alright, no sweeper, please. Up the beanstalk is acceptable. So they need double removal spell to deal with Skrelf first. And there's a leyline binding. Draws with beanstalk. And our opponent explodes. Alright, I guess our opponent did not draw into another answer here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And yeah, our hand is keepable. A little slow, but on the play, it should still get there. Just need a fourth land. And then Flesh Gorger into four drop. Can potentially give vigilance if we need to race or if uh, we need to play around the Wandering Emperor. Black-white, not our favorite color to see, since uh, that means removal that can kind of ignore our abilities. But the Awakening can help. Make that Esper. Okay, so we'll start with Flash Gorger. I guess we can play Courtyard to save ourselves damage next turn. Awakening, more of a 5-drop when we can play it and incubate in the same turn. Alright, does seem to be Esper Legends, better than a more typical control deck. Vindicator is a card we want to keep in play to hold off the flyers, although it might get bounced by a channel land or maybe destroyed by a Gopher Throat. So we could also have a look with Peacekeeper, but that's not all that exciting. I think we still go for Vindicator and then just hope they don't have removal in hand. And then we might be able to hold off an attack. Well, they did not immediately kill it, so that's giving me some hope. Fairy Fencing, never mind. So it's kind of a Esper Fairies deck with Rafine. So Vindicator down, yeah, that's... Not what we were hoping for. Our opponent can pull ahead with Rafine's Connive ability. And do they also have a discard spell? Yeah, Ego Drain, another payoff for the Fairy deck. And they've got the pick of the litter here. Missionary could get back, Vindicator. So that's not too bad. Could play it now, could still go for Awakening plus Incubate, which is a little more efficient. Not that Vigilance on Flesh Gorger matters all that much right now. Could maybe be relevant if our opponent's got Emperor in the deck. And then we can animate this end of turn. The lifelink is helping in the race. But our opponent's creatures are getting bigger and bigger. Rafine and Wedding Announcement discard it. Take six. Okay, get in for seven. I don't think we're animating a Restless Fortress this turn. Our opponent knows about Obliterator, so it's possible they're keeping up a counter spell. Spell Stutter comes to mind. Nope, opponent's got a Wandering Emperor, but yeah, the Vigilance here is pretty effective. Opponent can only make a Samurai and jump. And then now, could also double spell without kicking Missionary. If I kick Missionary, then... I can't cast anything that I get back, but Vindicator is tempting, so it's certainly a close call. 
If I double spell, they don't have a great way to deal with Obliterator that we know of. So they're going to have to go digging, and then they're still going to have to deal with the rest of my board. Yeah, I think we're going to go for the more aggressive line here, which may or may not be worth it. The fact that we also have a creature lane to activate next turn helps. So Awakening definitely paying off here in this matchup. Getting your Obliterator exiled by Wandering Emperor feels incredibly bad. So glad we don't have to deal with it. Opponent discarding more creatures. Taking eight. They also have their own Restless Fortress, which could come into play, and a Vindicator off the top. So I have to decide whether I animate Fortress here or play Vindicator. If I were to attack with everyone, at the very least their opponent animates Fortress. They can jump the 4-4, block Missionary, take 8, we gain 5 up to 12. If I also animate my own fortress, attack all out, then let's say they block, block, then they would be taking 11 exactly. But it's not like they have any better blocks available. So fortress is certainly an option. They could still have another Wandering Emperor which can exile fortress, since this one is not a Phyrexian. And then they could also stay alive. So I think it's just attack, play Vindicator. And hope it doesn't get countered. But if they have to animate Fortress to survive, then we're good to go. Go for the Throat Kills Obliterator. Okay, so hopefully their last card isn't relevant. And another one, wow. Okay, so good that we didn't play Vindicator first. Opponent falls to 4. We're at 10, so we would potentially die next turn. But Vindicator can maybe save us. They still get a lot of redraws, so if they have some instant speed interaction that they draw into, we could still die. But uh, yeah, Vindicator blocking their largest creature would we'll just kill them. So they need removal for it once again. And they've uh, drawn their fair share. Emperor goes for a plus one counter. I have got new moves to teach you. And our opponent passes. Thalia cannot let me activate Fortress alongside it. So I think we animate Fortress, attack all out. If our opponent had an answer for Vindicator, we would have seen it by now. And Vindicator, at the very least, deals three damage with Rafine blocking it. So, I think we go for it here. So just Vindicator and Fortress could be enough. The other attacks are a bit more questionable. Although it might still be okay, to be fair. They could still have another Wandering Emperor, Exile Fortress, and stay alive that way. Our opponent actually had the Soaring City, that's very surprising. Feels like they would have had lethal last turn, had they bounced Vindicator. Opponent's at 1. Since we were at 10, opponent could have put a counter on one of their creatures with Wandering Emperor, and then they just needed to hit one non-land card with Connive to cross the finish line. But uh, maybe they didn't like those odds. Fortress attacks, opponents back up to three. And we can block here. And Aiganjo could be decent too. So if I animate Fortress, send both, opponents at one, but they can block both successfully, so that doesn't really help. So instead we're just gonna Thalia plus Vindicator. Could also attack and then channel Iganjo to finish off Rafine, presumably, um, and then play Thalia. I 
think Vindicator is still better here. So I don't think I should bother with the attack. Although, well, I guess it's not really a downside since I'm happy trading for Mastermind. At least make him think about it. Okay. So Vindicator plus Thalia. I'll take the one damage from Caves to keep Iganjo for next turn. Alright, let's see if we can get there next turn. Ponan did get a few more draw steps in the meantime, so they might have found another answer to Vindicator. Alright, our opponent's attacking here as we connect back. So they are going for it. Did they find an answer to Vindicator? Dream Thief draws, but now they can no longer go for the throat because of Thalia. And the uh, channel lands would, at least uh, relevant ones, still cost 3 mana. Ooh, Fairy Fencing, but we still have a 2-2, so... Yeah, that's enough to block Fairy Mastermind and kill the opponent with the Vindicator's ability. So incredibly close game here against Esper Fairies. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow to get going without any one or two mana plays. But at least our mana is decent. And then a Vigilant Obliterator could be pretty good in some matchups. Turn one Ginger Brute, so... A red White Aggro. Found a Butcher, that's nice. Yeah, depending on what our opponent's playing, Obliterator could be quite effective. Skrelv can maybe help attack past Obliterator. So if we want to guarantee 3 drop into 4 drop, I should probably just go for Tapped Barons instead of playing Butcher on 2. And then we've got a few options here at 3 mana. Not in a hurry to play Awakening, can always play it after playing Obliterator, but before attacking. It's either Flash Gorger or Sentry. Yeah, we can go for Flash Gorger here. Good in a racing situation. And see what removal they're working with. Opponent passes. So... Could attack with Flesh Gorger. Opponent might have, let's say, an Aigancho, although they've already missed a land drop, so it doesn't seem super likely. It's gonna be a Liberator. Okay. Opponent still takes the hits. And yeah, play Obliterator. So they've got plenty of artifact synergy with Liberator here. A Greatsword Convoked. Haven't seen that one in Constructed before. And then, yeah, we could go for Frexian Awakening. Sentry also exiles cheaper artifacts, but Greatsword has mana value of 5, so that's not going to work out. So we'll get Vigilance, and then Butcher to pump the team, as opposed to paying the 2 for Incubate, can do that next turn. So get in for 10, gain 4, and we should be in pretty decent shape here. Don't need to worry about Wandering Emperor with Awakening giving Vigilance. A Liberator gets in for 5. Our opponent can maybe chum block with Ginger Brute and sack it for 3 life, but I think that's still not going to work with our creature having Menace and Trample here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable but unexciting hand. Go with Barons, 
turn two is Krelf most likely, and then turn three we can play one of our three drops on curve. Probably starting with Flash Gorger. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one Mountain, so red aggro. Okay, and they've got to turn one Kumano, so cutdown's not going to be at its best. If they have a two mana creature, if they've got a one drop, I can still maybe cut down. Think still fine to play Skrelv. And then next turn we can potentially cut down. Or play Flesh Gorger and have it protected, which is also pretty important in the matchup. And then giving it Vigilance means we can play offense and defense. Opponent has a Sheevan Devastator, that one's still within range of cutdown. Okay. Go for Flesh Gorger. Just need to watch out for Monstrous Rage, pumping, etching of Kumano to trade for Flesh Gorger here. So I might have to take the hits and then next turn, especially with a land, if we attack with Vigilant Flesh Gorger, we can still cut down all the way back. Play with fire kills Skrelv. Not gonna give pro reds on Flesh Gorger in response, even though now they could go land play with fire. Opponent passes, okay. So Flesh Gorger could attack. I doubt our opponent's double blocking, since we could punish that. And then play Missionary, keep up cut down anyways. As opposed to going for Awakening, which is also an option, but I think that's going to be more effective once we have more Phyrexians in play. Bonon does actually go for the double block, that's not going to work out. Play Missionary. And yeah, we're gaining a ton of life here against Red. And Butcher can pump our team. Our opponent had the Lightning Strike, just missing the land last turn. So now Butcher would get Flash Gorger out of Lightning Strike range, even if it's not quite as mana efficient as playing the Awakening. Seems more important. And we can still cut down. And then I'm just hoping to top deck one of our four mana Phyrexians. Scoundrel can wait for the trigger here. Kill it and respond so we don't get drained by the Wicked Roll. And now we can go for Vigilance. And then next turn we're presenting Lethal with the Incubator. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little clunky with all three drops so far, so hoping to find something cheaper in the meantime, and maybe some four drops eventually. But uh, it's functional, so I'll give it a try. Although against turn one Swiss beer, we're definitely going to need something on turn two. At least our mana base is painless, no pain lands here. Turn to Felden, so if we can find a 2-drop, I like my chances. Okay. Still gonna be pretty far behind, but we've got some nice cards to help stabilize. Might want to have a look with Peacekeeper before committing Flesh Gorger, so we don't lose it to a Lightning Strike. Bonus got a Frenzy for 1 mana, that's nice. Take 6. So I don't know if we have time to wait on Flesh Gorger. But Peacekeeper's pretty good here, can hold off most of their creatures. And then next turn Flesh Gorger will be a little bit safer, I think. Our opponent did have the Lightning Strike. So they could go Wicked Roll on Felden to keep attacking, but hopefully that's it. And then we can outrace Felden with the Flesh Gorger eventually. No, oh, opponent goes for treasure so they can unlock Lightning Strike next turn. No attacks. So they don't have a land yet. I think Flesh Gorger tap land still the play. Could have considered attacking first. 
Not sure if we're happy trading for Scoundrel and one Swiss Spear. Probably better to keep Peacekeepers, so they have to play a 4-mana Lightning Strike. And then with the Awakening giving Vigilance, that's going to be a big deal. Can immediately make a 4-4 on defense as well. Phoenix Chick is acceptable. And Swiss Spear's opponent just setting up. And, uh, yeah, they could definitely set up some reasonable blocks on the Flash Gorger now. But then we have Missionary to get it back as well. For now, Awakening still seems a little bit better. Could also go for Butcher, but that requires a Sacrifice, which we're not willing to make right now. Alright, so we'll attack. And then, is it just Flesh Gorger? Or does Peacekeeper also get in there? If I send both... Double Swiss Spear Scoundrel... Is the best block they have available, really, or Triple Swiss Spear? So I think if we're attacking, I may as well attack with both. Opponent takes it, that's good. And then I'll take 4-4 over Missionary, so we can maybe kick it. So this could hurt if they've got a land for Lightning Strike. They do. Alright, opponent doesn't do anything yet, so they're setting up for next turn. Or maybe Lightning Strike to trigger Prowess on defense also makes sense. So if that's the case, Sentry could remove one Swiss Spear. Interesting that the Phoenix Jake also didn't attack. That was probably not intended. So yeah, Sentry, and then... Can still play a two-mana Missionary afterwards. Versus play Missionary for two, sack it to the Butcher. And then they would Lightning Strike in response. Maybe go to Attackers first. And then do we send everyone? Yeah, I guess uh, I'm okay with a couple trades and then gaining three with Flash Gorger. And then we can Missionary back the Flash Gorger potentially. That point's going to Lightning Strike the Flash Gorger. Pay three life. And then line up some blocks. But now I'm less afraid of taking a bunch of damage on the way back. So, triple block. That's fine. Trade for one Swiss Spear. And then Missionary with Kicker. And get back Flash Gorger. Next turn can cast it for 7 mana, which might be the play. We're still at 14. Lightning Strike deals with Missionary now, so our opponent had multiples in hand. And an all-out attack, so we'll block Swiss Spear. And then 7 mana Flesh Gorger is probably good enough to stabilize. Our opponent won't be able to kill it with Witch Talker Frenzy since they're at 3. Could also double spell Flash Gorger and Sentry. Don't think they'll have an Act of Treason, also can't steal the Flash Gorger anyway, so... Let's just go big. Definitely the more exciting play. I guess we could have also considered just animating Fortress. And that might have been lethal last turn, but... Yeah, once we survived that uh, scary turn, it was pretty trivial to close it out. Sweet. All right, so we got to see our black-white Phyrexians and Taxes in action. Overall, the deck doesn't strike me as particularly powerful. It's also very matchup dependent. You don't really mind playing against red and green decks especially, although green is not very popular on the rank ladder nowadays. But when facing some of those black and white removal spells, it doesn't really matter if your Vindicator or Obliterator have fancy abilities. The opponent's just going to remove it as if the card didn't have any text. So those are the matchups you typically want to avoid. Decks with lots of spot removal that ignore toughness and that don't deal damage. 
and then sweepers especially can also be quite painful. So I don't think it's the best position deck in the current meta, but it is pretty funny to play this against those red decks that can struggle to deal with Obliterator or Vindicator. Just gotta make sure you can uh, somehow gain a bit of life back, since dying to burn spells is still very much a possibility. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.